All right. So next up, we've got Mausoleum, which is another film I've never heard of or seen before. So let's see if it's any good. Mausoleum is a 1983 American horror film directed by Michael Duggan and was added to the BBFC's list of video nasties. Duggan was also the director of Raging Hormones, a sex comedy film released in 1999. So the film starts at a graveyard, where a young Susan is crying over her mother's grave. Her aunt tries to console her, but she runs off. And there we get a small glimpse of the acting yet to come. Susan runs into a mausoleum shroud in a terribly superimposed smoke. We have a decent shot of her walking through a hallway, and when she reaches the end she finds a tomb. Then some man enters, but has a seizure. A shadow looks at Susan, and she gets green, glowy, dune-style eyes. The man runs outside, and this happens. I quite like the mausoleum set. It has a very Hammer Horror style to it, cheesy yet nostalgic. And the lighting harks back to 20s-style filters, which is quite fun. We end the mausoleum scene with a long shot of a demon hand. Now, one thing this film really likes to do is to hold on a shot for far too long. We then cut to 20 years later. I know this because of some dialogue much later in the film. We don't get a title card or anything to explain. But anyway, Susan's aunt is talking to Susan's doctor about her mental health. Over to Susan, who is now 30, and she's played by Bobby Brissy, a former Playboy bunny. We see she's dreaming of the mausoleum, but is woken by her husband, Oliver, played by Major Gortner. They're interrupted by their creepy gardener, Ben, who seems to like watching Susan through the window. Oliver and Susan decide to go to a club. We get some awful dancing, and Susan gets hit on by a drunken man. They leave the club, and the drunken man barges into them and staggers away. This annoys Susan, so she waits until he's in his car, and then makes it explode with more glowy eyes. And, for some reason, the shot of Susan with glowy eyes is just a still image. After an obvious VHS flicker, Ben the Gardener returns to advance on Susan. We get some back and forth, some possessed house scare tactics, and the ever-important Ben montage, and finally Susan seduces Ben. After the sex, Sue gets all green eye and kills Ben with a handbrake. We also get an awful shot of Demon Susan in the shadows, the composition's just terrible. After some Susan and Oliver sex, Susan's aunt comes over to visit. Susan's in demon mode and kills her aunt by levitating her and doing this. After Oliver wakes in the night and sees Susan in a rocking chair, he gives Dr. Simon a call and they arrange for her to see him. Susan dreams in reused footage, don't we all? And the next day, Susan's maid Elise, played by Lawanda Page, comes round to do her job. She notices green fog coming from Susan's room and in a scene that I'm assuming is supposed to be comical, runs home scared. Susan goes to Dr. Simon's appointment, and he hypnotises her. The demon comes out, sounding a lot like the exorcist demon, and now Dr. Simon starts thinking possession is an option, so he gets the help of a paranormal expert. Back at home, and Susan gets flirty with a delivery boy, she, um, I think makes a phone melt his face. Not too sure about that one. Susan takes a trip to a shopping centre, and oh hey look, electronics boutique. And while she's there, she kills a store clerk after stealing a painting. So this is where the film starts losing me a bit. Mainly because I was getting really bored at this point. So the basics are, the Doctor is going to get a thorny crown from the mausoleum to exorcise the demon. Susan has sex with Oliver in a bath and kills him. Dr. Simon makes it over to Susan's house and she's playing with a doll. He puts the crown on her and she crossfades into a demon. Another example of a shot taking far too long, over a minute but feels like more, and also demon boobs. The doctor carries Susan to the mausoleum, she lays the demon and crown to rest, and the whole ordeal is over. Dr. Simon then talks to a man in a robe on a gravestone, which turns out to be Ben. Okay. He laughs, freeze frame, and the film ends. So you can probably guess what I thought of the film. I didn't like it. I was having fun at first, but then it just kept going and going and was really slow and boring. A lot of the shots were terrible, the angles were all off and the composition was poor. The goal was basic, it likes to cut away from people dying and then back to them once they're dead. 
and there are so many long shots of nothing with silence in the background. The music, when there is any, is nondescript, at least until the scene where I think it's trying to be funny, then it's just jarring. The acting's pretty bad in parts, and the story's cliche and done to death. Now for the release. Firstly, the aspect ratio is okay. This is the only thing they got right, however. The print is terrible. It must be a VHS rip. There's interlacing issues and colour bleed, making the film look muddy and boring, and there's scratches all the way throughout. The sound isn't great either. Very tinny and distant, and levels going up and down constantly. The case is quite to the point, with not much text, but wait a minute. Poes? Poes? Pause? Um, I'm guessing that's meant to say powers. And then down here. Filmography. Come on, you spell it right here. This is the first of many examples of spelling errors on these DVDs. And as we've grown to expect by now, the runtime is incorrect. This time by four minutes. This is another one where the film just starts, and I couldn't even access the menu by pressing the menu button. I had to wait for the film to finish before I could get to it. The special features just keep getting worse. Here we have basically nothing. A gallery, some filmographies, or filmography, and video art, which is just pictures of VHS covers. What a waste of time. Overall, then, I'd say that this isn't very good. Uh, the release is quite poor, and the film itself is quite boring. This is the only version released in the UK, as far as I'm aware, so if you must see this film, this will be the version you end up seeing. But honestly, I couldn't recommend this.